What's going on guys and welcome back to F1 2021 My Team Career Mode for Season 2 Round 6, the French Grand Prix. So we start off by renewing our sponsors. Uh, a couple of our sponsors ran out so I just renewed them and I also put the liveries, the, the stickers back on the car because for some reason when you have to renew sponsors, you then have to, even if you just go and renew the same ones, it takes all the liveries off, all the you know, all the sponsors off the cars. So I think that's a bit stupid really. I don't really get why they do that. But I think if you renew it, it should just keep them where they were. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I think it's a bit stupid personally. Uh, we're gonna put a few little upgrades on the car, mainly durability stuff, because I think that's the main thing we need to get going a little bit better. We also have a powertrain facility kind of event happen here. And then looking at R&D, we are now the second quickest car on R&D, only behind Mercedes. And we've seen throughout this season so far that Mercedes do not seem to be as quick as they should be. But we are now pretty much right there, actually slightly ahead of Red Bull, Ferrari, McLaren, Alpine, we're right there in the mix and actually slightly above them in R&D, so perhaps we can now start ra uh, going for race wins. We've already had a podium this season at Baku, but um, yeah, after last race in Canada, of course we had a mechanical failure. That ended up being the brand new turbo that I put on the car, so the brand new, never used before turbo went kaput. So you know what? I'm going to stop, because what I will have been doing is I've been just um, using like more worn upgrades, more worn parts for practice and then switching over to uh, to some less worn or newer parts for the races and stuff. But that's not really been working out for me. So you know what, I'm just gonna do what I would would do in the previous game. I'm just gonna kind of keep wearing, using parts in every session until they're somewhat worn and then switch to new sets. So anyway, into this one, Q1, it went okay. I actually didn't go as quick as I was hoping. Very, very dry, nice track to start with here. But um, yeah, generally just couldn't get great pace to be honest in Q1. As you can see in Q2 here, it is starting to get a little bit darker and you may notice more towards the end of this lap, although there are a couple of little dots like on the left there underneath the uh, the kind of um, lap counter and position counter on the left, there are a few little raindrops happening in this towards the end of this Q2 session. So wasn't really affecting this car at this point in time, but judging off this, I was pretty sure we were going to have a wet Q3 if we were to make it through to Q3. We're currently in Q9 after our first flying lap in Q1, uh, Q2, and we did go faster this time. It is Q8 for us and Q uh, P8 for us and P5 for Alonso as Charles Leclerc goes quickest in the Ferrari, so very, very good for him there. Although Carlos Sainz is out in this session, so perhaps the big surprise there. And sure enough, Q3 comes around and it is very much wet. We're on to the inter tyres. And to be honest, I went out slightly a bit earlier than I usually would towards the end of the session because I thought, and judging from what the radar said, and I think we had this in one of our previous races as well, um, apparently the track was going to get worse. However, I went out at this point, a few other guys, most, well, pretty much everyone, went out just a, a lap or so after I came in and they went quite a bit quicker. So we've got into the top 10. We're currently sitting P10 because I didn't set another lap. This was kind of my only lap. I didn't want to shred through the tires. It's going to be a dry race. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter for this point anyway, because these are into tires. So I could have really done a bit more running, to be honest. But um, I decided to just go out for the one flying lap. But I should have left it a little bit later because, um, yeah. Honestly, I've got my weather on approximate because I think it's a bit more realistic than having it on exact. So um, the weather said that it was going to get slightly worse towards the end of the session. In fact, it seemed to get slightly better because from what I remember, my lap here was not amazing. We'll see it at the end, but it wasn't It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't awful. Um, definitely got me up the order, I think at least up to where Alonso was. I mean, he's currently sitting in P8. Uh, at this current point in time and we're coming to finish off our Q3 lap here the lap that will determine where we are on the grid and as we go to cross the line we actually end up P5 so it's actually a pretty good lap time for us but obviously the the session obviously got better the track got better we end up P10 some half a second back from Alonso in P9 and then yeah we're, we're even slower than Lungard in the Alpine so got a little bit of work to do in the race. Welcome along then to France, host of the world-famous Tour de France. 
but we're not talking two wheels today. We're talking four in a country widely thought of as giving birth to the art of motor racing back in the late 1800s. We've come a long way since then, and you're about to find out how far. It's time for the French Grand Prix. The circuit Paul Ricard then, a 3.6 mile track, 25 miles east of Marseille. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right, with the main overtaking chance expected going into turn eight. Top speeds today should be around 205 miles per hour. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Hamilton, Giovinazzi, Sergio Perez, and Ricardo, Norris, Lundgaard, Fernando Alonso, and Shaw, Gasly, Ocon, Carlos Sainz, and Russell, Sonoda, Stroll, Kimi Raikkonen, and Valtteri Bottas, Latifi, Mick Schumacher, Vettel, and Nikita Mazepin. And now it's time to head down to the track. All right, so we're starting P10 on the grid for the French Grand Prix. We go to five red lights, and it is out. It's a, once again a pretty quick start for this race. We actually get a very good start on Lungard up ahead, and also Ricardo with a pretty slow start too. Alonso, though, in front of us has a really good start, and then Gasly does a big dive up the inside, catches us out a little bit into turn one. That lets Ricardo get his way back through again but we're trying to keep Lundgaard behind and also trying to stay with Ricardo and potentially get him back here because we actually made like two positions up off the start and then have pretty much lost two again after turn two turn one turn two but we are managing to just about fend off the two Alpines behind of Lundgaard and Ocon and we're trying to keep with Ry with Ricardo sorry up ahead and um yeah, it's been a fairly crazy first few corners there, to be honest. And actually, Lungard is having a look at us. He's got the slipstream on us down the middle back straight here. And he's looking around the outside, but we're just about going to squeeze into the side. He's still there, though. But we have got the traction to keep him behind. However, he's still very, very close. He's there on the right. He's having a little look. He's too close for slipstream. And into this corner, as we stop deploying ERS, he's going to slip his way up the inside there. We're going too wide around that corner. And we're going to be too wide around the next very... Very, very fast right-hander here, the long sweeping right-hander, and Lundgaard's managed to get his way up in front of us and has a little bit of a wiggle off the end of the corner. We're just going to tuck up behind him here because we've now dropped out of the points and we're now being pressurized by Ocon, who is on the medium tires. So we are actually the furthest back soft tire runner, um, unless there's any soft tire runners behind us, but I don't think there are. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not been a great start for us, but we are now going to get the slipstream from Lundgaard up ahead. And we're going to size up a move into turn one. We're going to have a little look up the inside, but we can't quite do anything. We're not quite close enough. And without DRS, cannot do anything into that corner. So for now, we're going to have to tuck up behind him. But sure enough, on lap two, going down the back straight, we now manage to get once again up the back of Lundgaard with the slipstream, still no DRS, and we're going to go for a, quite a ballsy dive around the outside into the chicane, that's on the inside for the next corner, and we've got the position done on our teammate from last season. It was a pretty scary moment there. He kind of gave us not a whole lot of room, pushed us right onto the curb and on the edge of the track. But luckily, Paul Ricard has plenty of space. Virtual safety car is deployed at the end of lap two for a little bit of a scuffle going on behind us. My engineer telling me that there's some debris on the track. It's only a virtual safety car, though, not a full course safety car. As we watch a replay here of Lance Stroll coming around here, Antonio Giovinazzi up in front has been slow for some reason, and Lance Stroll smacks right into the back of him. He's lost his front wing, and although it looks like it's only the front wing, obviously there's a bit more damage going on there. He's also just gone past the pits as well, so yeah, Lance Stroll would DNF out of the session. Giovinazzi had that issue, which slowed him right down, but he did means you've lost one of the gears say again you have lost access to one of the gears okay, and then second, that happens totally forgot about that we have an issue with our gearbox so our gearbox is definitely on its last legs it's at like 75 percent but we've got to use it for this race and the next race we can change it as george russell is now out of the session there's so many things going on here for the french grand prix it's absolutely crazy as we head on to lap number seven, we will be coming in next lap, and we've got Pierre Gasly up ahead of us, who's actually on the medium tyres, but has pretty damn good pace here. 
of course he started behind us in I think P11 or 12 and um, yeah started on the medium tyres but has had some great great pace and sure enough lap number 7 we're coming into the pits for our first pit stop onto medium tyres Gasly goes on ahead of us and actually goes on as Perez comes in as well he's now leading the Grand Prix we come in here for our so, uh, our medium tyres for our first of two pit stops onto the medium tyres. We get dropped back quite a lot here, thanks to a lot of other the other um, early runners not coming into the pit yet. We come out in quite a big group of cars here. We're just behind this big kind of battle going on in front of us. Um, as we watch on with Fernando Alonso trying to make his way through the grid after making his first pit stop. He's going for the inside on Nikita Mazepin into what is, I believe, turn four or turn three. Um, the next chicane here and he has not quite got the position yet and actually has let Daniel Ricciardo get up the inside of him but he's just about managed to hold that one off as now down the back straight here can get very very scary but of course Mazepin is now not in a good place because he's the only one here that doesn't have the DRS Alonso goes for the overtake on Mazepin Ricardo goes for the overtake on Giovinazzi doesn't quite get that one done but Alonso is ahead of Mazepin and I believe Giovinazzi is now ahead of Mazepin we are right up the back of Daniel Ricardo as we go to the inside Ricardo goes to the inside of Mazepin he gets past him but we're going to find ourselves side by side with Mazepin through this fast right hand corner here just like we were with Lundgaard however now we are on the inside and we just about manages manage to get him into through this long corner and we're up ahead of Mazepin we've got past the slower car and now we are actually racing with Ricardo, Giovinazzi and Alonso up ahead lap number nine now and we're still we're still with this train of cars here we see up ahead though Alonso spun out and he's gone into the wall Alonso's hit the curb spun around and he's out of the session he must have damaged his car pretty bad there let's look at a replay here he just catches it on the inside of turn one and smacks straight into the wall it doesn't look like he's broken like suspension or a wheel or anything as we have a look on board here you can see a little bit of wing come off on the wall there so perhaps some you know underwork damage there because once again it looks like it's only a front wing issue however the next lap round we're having a little look on Daniel Ricciardo the action just doesn't stop in this race this was a fully action-packed race we can't quite get anything done there but now we are there's a big big train here we've got Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, I think Mick Schumacher in the Haas is in front of us here as well um, Lando Norris also just ahead of this train and then you've got the two Williams of Bottas and Latifi just up the road as well and I think there's a Ferrari up there too there's a lot of cars on track now in a little bit of a DRS train but overtakes are still happening with myself and with the AI and speaking of overtakes we're going around the outside of Daniel Ricciardo and just ahead of us Antonio Giovinazzi has got the move done on Mick Schumacher, Ricardo is trying to fight it back on the exit of turn one and into turn two, but he can't quite do it. However, he's got a good run down here, but we're going to try and have a sneaky little look at the inside of Schumacher. Can't quite do anything at this point in time, but there's no reason to worry. We're coming down to the back straight now, where although Mick is probably going to have DRS on Giovinazzi in front. We should have a bit of an advantage. We've actually got like the quickest engine, I think, uh, bar Mercedes in this career mode. And sure enough, we just about get the position done on Mick Schumacher. And we're up into P15, I believe that is. It's been a pretty chaotic race. I can already feel my throat going dry from just so much talking. As now, on to lap 12, we're sizing up a move on Giovinazzi, is up ahead, Norris has got past the kind of back marker, but not really, of Latifi, he's one of the slower cars that hasn't pit yet, we've got past Giovinazzi, and now we're going to be sizing up Latifi, he's a much slower car, and sure enough, down the back straight here, with DRS, he's, don't think he's actually got DRS off Norris up ahead, he might do, but it's not going to mean anything anyway, because we have got the position, as Norris then gets the position on Bottas, up ahead as well he's making his way through the grid quite well here and we're trying to follow Norris through we're up into P13 at this current point in time we're gonna go up the inside of Bottas he gives us plenty of room the now one-time world champion from last season you know very very fair to race with here but he's not gonna give it up too easily he's gonna go around the outside there but then he is gonna come into the pits so we didn't really need to battle him anyway but it was a fun 
little battle there with Bottas. And now on lap 14, we find ourselves behind Lando Norris, who then has Lewis Hamilton in front of him. We're now into P7 as a lot of the cars in front have come into the pit. So this is pretty much where we are sitting now um, on actually on paper um, as it's now P6 as I think Verstappen's come in for his pit stop from the lead of the race. Um, and yeah, we find ourselves stuck behind Norris a little bit here. We're actually making a pretty, we've made a pretty big gap to Ricardo behind. So got good pace on him. But now we find ourselves in a little bit of a DRS train, just trying to use as much ERS as I can because the ERS is definitely working very well as we do a beautiful little move around the outside on Lando Norris through turn one, but then we get a little bit caught up out of turn two and that allows Norris to have a little look Around the outside, that gives him the inside for the next corner. We're going to give him the space around here, and he's still there. We just about managed to get in front before getting onto the back straight, but this is probably not the best thing for us because now he's going to have the DRS down the back straight. We are not close enough to Hamilton in front to have DRS ourselves. And sure enough, Lando gets a great, great run, hangs it round the outside, very, very good of him, and I just have to back out and let him go, but I'm not going to give up that easily. We're now right up the back of him, coming through this next corner, and are we going to do what we did on Lundgaard and Mazepin? Yes, we are. We're going to the inside once again of this fast corner. This is such a fun corner to go too wide around. We can't quite hold it this time with Norris. He just about managed manages to keep in there so we're still hooked up behind him and now I don't have a whole lot of opportunities to get past him until we get round to the front straight again but that isn't too far away so we're just going to sit behind him here we're going to wait we're going to be patient that's what we need to do to to make up positions here and get past Norris and potentially try and go for a podium here we're going to see how it works out for us because this time we have the DRS, we're up into P3 with a lot of cars ahead of us going into the pits. We're going around the outside into turn one. He's still there on the inside. We are now on the inside for turn two and we've got the position. This time we don't get caught up on the curb and he's still right behind us. We're having to be quite defensive going into what I believe is, well, I guess you'd call it turn three and we've got the position on Norris. The next lap round, he does try and have a little look around the outside into this chicane here off the back straight, but isn't quite close enough. He actually pretty much goes off track to try and get that overtake done, but doesn't quite, he's not quite able to make it work. As then on lap 18, we are in for our final pit stop onto our last set of white wall, uh, yellow wall, medium tires. And these are the tires that are hopefully gonna take us to the end of the race it should be dry for the rest of the race it's looking very very gloomy here but there shouldn't be any rain as we come out of the pits alongside Antonio Giovinazzi he's actually managed to get a little bit of an undercut on us there but not enough to get past us and we just about managed to get him but there's an almighty battle going on behind us with Lando Norris trying to make his way past um who is that Sebastian Vettel there he is having a good old scrap there with Vettel and um, has just about come out on top. But now Daniel Ricciardo, the other McLaren, is sizing up Sebastian Vettel as well. That Aston Martin, really not that quick this season. It's actually only like the eighth fastest car or something like that. It's really not that fast. It's down there with like the, uh, the Alfa Romeos, to be honest. Um, and sure enough, Daniel Ricciardo manages to get the move stuck on Sebastian Vettel. So that puts him up an another place. As we go on to lap 19, we're just kind of chilling now. We're in the top 10, we're in P10. Um, we're trying to catch Kimi Raikkonen up ahead, who's on a set of hard tires, and of course is in a much slower car than us. Around this corner here, we get up a little bit too much on the curb, and what have we done? We've spun the car round. It's all gone wrong for us. We were looking destined for some for decent points. I mean, we weren't looking amazing. We weren't looking, honestly, for a podium at this point, but we were looking for you know, probably top six, maybe, in the end, but we just screw it up. We just slightly hit that curb with the front left wheel. That sends the car spinning around. Thankfully, there's plenty of runoff on this track, so we don't hit anything, but that's cost us a lot of time, and now it's going to take a little bit of time to get the tyres back up to temperature. Usually, I would rewind when something like that happened, but I've, I've actually didn't have a single rewind in this race. It's the first race I think I've ever done 
in this game that that's happened on this career mode. So I decided, you know what? I've made a mistake. I'm just going to live with it, and I'm I'm going to let it happen. So from now on, I'm, unless it's a really stupid crash that just completely screws me over, um, I will not be using rewinds as much. So you will hopefully see more accidents. But we now have to make our way back through the field again. It's going to be difficult to get back up to points. We're making a move on Christian Lungard, our previous teammate. He actually gives us a little bit of a bump out of turn two. And it's now a drag race down to turn three. He's on the inside. We're going to try and hang it around the outside. It's very, very close. And I think there might be a little bit more contact there between us, of course. The rivalry between us is still there. He's managed two second place finishes this season so far. We've only managed it once on the podium, so he's definitely doing a good job for sure. We get the position though, and Vettel is the next one. He's on the hard tyre, so once again, quite a bit slower than ours. We should be able to make a move relatively quickly. And with the DRS, it is an absolute breeze to get past the four-time world champion. Easy enough. We're up into P13 now, I believe. It's Kimi Raikkonen up ahead. Fair bit of a Just gap, a though. Reminder, we are critical on fuel, probably a lap or so short. We don't need to risk a DNF chasing records, so think about starting to conserve fuel, maybe lifting earlier into the corners. However, catching Raikkonen is going to be a bit more of an issue. Carlos Sainz is actually just DNF'd out of the session. So we're up to P12. We do catch up to Raikkonen fairly quickly. Of course, we're a much quicker car, but now I've got to start saving fuel. This is the first time this has happened in this game. I always fuel my car for more laps than it tells me. Um, I think I fueled for like 28 laps when this is a 27 lap race and of course you can't regulate f fuel flow in this game. They took it out from the 2020 game. So um, I'm just having to lift and coast a little bit. I don't know why we're using so much fuel. I mean my original strategy told me to use like 30 laps of fuel or something. I put that down to 28 but we still are having issues here and we're having the lift off and finding it very difficult to get past Raikkonen. Further up the grid though, Yuki Tsunoda, he's currently sitting in P4. He's just got past Esteban Ocon to put himself up into third place, into the podium places. This, on the final lap, this could be the first podium finish for Yuki Tsunoda and it's looking good for AlphaTauri on the hole at the moment as well. Sergio Perez has also managed to get his way past Esteban Ocon, and poor Ocon is finding himself shot down the order on this final lap from a podium position. He's now into P5, and he's got Leclerc and Hamilton behind him putting massive pressure on two. Leclerc going for the inside here, having a little look down the back straight. Is he going to get overtaken into the chicane? It's very, very close, but not quite. Ocon just about manages to hold on to P5 at this current point in time. But like I said, Alpha Tauri, they're looking very good today, and this one man especially. Pierre Gasly, the French driver in Alpha Tauri, is going to go ahead. He's going to go on to win the French Grand Prix. The one stop for him, it worked very, very well, and it's worked for his teammate Yuki Tsunoda too, who comes home in P3. It's a double podium for Alpha Tauri, and Max Verstappen comes home in P2. So it's great for the Red Bull Honda powered cars. And we end up in P12. We can't get past Raikkonen in the end. I had the pace on him, but I was just having to lift and coast through a lot of corners. Just didn't have enough fuel at the end of the race, which I'm really surprised happened. Never had that happen before. But yeah, it's P12 for us. Sadly, no points. Another superb French Grand Prix comes to an end. And it's a thoroughly deserved victory. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. As we await the winners to take their positions on the podium, one thing is clear. Alpha Tori have really shown their prowess on the track. This is a team that isn't afraid to take risks, whether that's on the circuit or in the new talent they hire. Today, those risks certainly paid off. So Pierre Gasly wins the French Grand Prix. A French driver wins the French Grand Prix. It's of course his second victory in Formula One. His first in this career mode of ours though. Max Verstappen comes home second and Yuki Tsunoda gets his first ever podium in Formula One with third place. A great move for AlphaTauri there. Um, yeah, that one stop just proving very, very good. I mean, it's actually top four. Red Bull powered cars, I mean Honda powered cars, it's 
they had a very good race here in France. We come home in P12, of course. We had four DNFs in that race, which is pretty crazy. Because we don't get any points, we move down to 12th in the standings, getting overtaken by Max Verstappen. He finally starts moving his way up the order like he probably should be after a lot of unlucky races. And yeah, we're just kind of falling down the order, myself and Alonso. And in the constructors, we've also fallen down to 7th, but we're still in it for a good finishing position. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.